Thank you very much. Um, I am privileged to be here today. You know, I, I love Congressman Chaffetz's uh, toilet story. I, I like to think that we, have a, we all have a similar problem. There's this great big toilet back in D.C. <laughs> and it won't flush. You know, I, back in uh, 1998, my wife and I found ourselves coming home from D.C. after internships at the White House and the Supreme Court. And we knew at that time we needed to get active in politics. So the very next year in 1999, we made a phone call to the Republican Party and we said, how do we attend our mass meetings? And they said, call this person. And so we did. We called him. And a few days later, we went over to his house and we picked up a manila envelope in order to host a caucus because nobody wanted to do it. My wife and I hosted that mass meeting. My wife became the precinct chair, I think. I became the vice chair. She became the secretary. We both became state delegates and we both became county delegates. Now, as you can imagine, it wasn't because we were popular. It's because we were the only two people there. <laughs> now, within a year of that, in 2000, I had decided, well, I've been a precinct chair, or a vice chair, and I've been a delegate. It's, it's time to run for Congress. <laughs> and um, so my wife and I set about learning what it would take to run for Congress. Well, fortunately, Someone approached me and said, look, we have got a, a legislative seat that is uh, in need of a candidate. Would you be willing to run? And I said, sure. Um, I, I decided to run for the state legislature. My wife and I spent uh, the next year of our life campaigning as hard as we possibly could. And Sorry, my wife is far more composed than I am. She should be speaking. Uh, with, by September of 2000, I walked in. To that chamber. I stood on the dais before a man named Speaker Marty Stevens. And I took oath in which I swore to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. influence on my life. I made a commitment at that time that I would do that at the expense of my reputation, at the expense of any money I did have, and I committed to serve the best I very, the very best I could. I served for four years and left to go to law school after having a little boy who sits right over there. When I came back, I thought perhaps I was done. But my time in politics, although a very good experience, has been in large part a great disappointment. I have seen that our parties, that our government, is filled with patronage and filled with power mongering. That is in direct contradiction and in diametric opposition to what our Constitution and our Founding Fathers intended. When they wrote that Constitution, James Madison stated that there was an intent to create a labyrinthian structure that would prevent 
the aggregation of all branches of government and power into the hands of any one particular faction. And yet, what do our parties seek to do? They seek to control. They seek to aggregate power. They have set themselves in direct opposition to the Constitution of the United States of America. And we all know that that is wrong. The Constitution provides the means by which a person is invited to transcend and rise above patronage, partisanship, and power mongering. It is the oath of office. It is an oath by which we swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States. It is not a partisan document. It is not intended to benefit any one person or one party over another. Now, they're not going to do this on their own. The parties, our congressmen, our senators, you must compel them to do it. You must bind them down with the chains of the Constitution. Now, we don't have a lot of time left to do it. I think it's pretty clear that our Constitution sits upon a precipice and we have a decision to make. Will we let it go the way of so many other governments, so many other forms that have been written to try and instill freedom within the hearts and cultures of people? Or will we bear it away? That is, is a decision we must make. I believe that we have an opportunity. I believe that we can say from here on out, as Utah goes, so goes the nation. That is the opportunity that you have. March 23rd is the night that that small and peaceful grassroots revolution can begin. You need to be at your mass meeting. You need to become a delegate. No matter what party you go for, you need to be a delegate. If you do, I believe we can change the very nature of politics in this nation. And we can do it right here. And we start with you. I hope that today you will leave here with a firm commitment to run and to become a delegate, no matter what it takes. Ask your family to help you. Ask them to sacrifice with you. And I believe together we will make it possible, if not to save the heart of this nation, to at least preserve our state as a shining example of how constitutional government should be upheld and maintained. Thank you so much for being here today.